What is up everybody? Golden Yogi here and you are tuning into the channel with the Golden Perspective. Today, what else is there to talk about except Bitcoin? I mean, yes, the alts have started to make a move, but it is Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin on the run. Okay, um, my now official position is that we have broken out of any trends that could lead us into a continuating bear market. It does not mean that we will be going um, up forever. I certainly believe there will be retracements. Uh, we need to stop out first to start to see where those potential retracements would be. All right. Uh, I haven't done this in a while about uh, talking about um, Elliott Wave analysis or uh, you know some of the tools that I personally use, and I I certainly don't recommend anything to anybody because I am not a financial advisor. Uh, these are my expressed opinions and tools that I use for myself. Um, I'm happy to talk about them with people, uh, and I'm happy to uh, you know to help educate people as well and how to use them. Anyway, going forward, uh, we can see this, uh, this chart here and it, it's just phenomenal. I mean, anybody who's paying attention to crypto and looks around can just see what the heck is going on here, right? And it's just up, up, up. Well, you can see this, um, this pitchfork that's thrown down here. Uh, let's zoom down so you can see where we have um, disconnected from our low. All right, I'm looking at Coinbase on the one day. All right, just to get a clearer picture of the overall action. So we're using a, a regular, um, you can see here, it's a original pitchfork, not a shift, modified shift or an inside. And you're going from low, swing high, swing back low again, because this was the next local low afterwards. All right. And from there, you can see that price action fell out of the fork, okay? But as it came back in, it crossed right through this median line and is continuing up. So like I see this area up here, I see some confluence, all right, in the potential stoppage at this, uh, yeah, right there, let's see that um, potential stop point or resistance, okay, let's even put on a, uh, like a horizontal line on that, say something about right there. All right, and then if we were to zoom back over into this region, and just don't pay attention to this ABC for right now because this is drawn like yesterday and prices moved so much, I haven't even taken time to adjust it. So this is not, um, like my count or points yet on, in fact, let's just, uh, let's kind of move that up. All right. For now. And I'll show you how I achieve those, um, these, these points. In fact, let's just get rid of it. Even this number, this five here, I'm thinking like, let's, let's call this, let's say next, next opportunity is up here. Uh, all of these, have now moved up with this as well. Oops. Um, let's do it. Uh, where's my undo? Undo. I think because there we go. Up here, this one. Oh, is it locked? Nope. Okay. So that whole cluster is now temporarily moved right there. All right, so uh, what I can see is things kind of moving down and maybe come up to where this resistance point is and also the resistance of the upper parallel of this pitchfork. All right, will it happen? I don't know, but uh, I'm not touching this market right now. This is um, dangerous. Anyway, until, until things spring back, you know, um, or we cross this, like, because if we cross this, there's just not a lot more uh, resistance anywhere. I mean, 
you know, because there's resistance right here. Um, it's the same the same point basically, uh, you know, like a tiny bit here, but then right up in here in like the like the nine thousand range. Okay, um, yeah, like ninety three. You know, it like price didn't stay up in these regions very long as they were coming down. Very interesting, to say the least. Okay, moving on. Coin market cap. All right, we're not looking at prices. We're not looking at market cap. Looking at 24-hour volume. Now, a buddy of mine, Matty, uh, um, we were talking this morning, and he pointed this out. And he's not a YouTuber, so I said, listen, I'm going to grab this. I'm going to go with it because this is, this is phenomenal. Okay, and this morning when... He mentioned it. He said, oh, it was like 82 billion. And I said, no, dude, look at it. It's 91 billion. And now it's 98.5 billion. Okay, let's click on this for a second. What, is this, what does this mean? And let's compare this to what it was at the all-time high. All right. So let's zoom into this area. And let's, you know, so right now with all this, you can see we have gotten up and we're currently at that... Well, we already know 98 billion, all right, in 24 hour volume. Now, this is over all the exchanges. And now, as we scroll back, you can see it's like in the teens, you know, 13 billion, under uh, like under 10 billion, you know, uh, let's see, some other just points to make 30 billion at that peak right there back in May. 22 billion there in this dip, 32 billion as it dumped down to the very first uh, big low in uh, February 6th. But look at this. Let's get up to the top. $45 billion in volume when it was at the top. And let's even look as it goes down. There's 62 billion right there. You know, and let's just drag it out so we can see, you know, what was leading up to this. Okay. I mean, look at that. This is like, this is the point at which I first got involved in crypto in June of 2017. And nobody knew about it. All right. So this is, this is crypto right here. And over here, this is internet money. This is the new money. All right. There's no, no doubts about it in my mind at this point that we're here. We have adoption. I mean, it's not like widespread adoption, but if you don't know already, go download the Cash App. And who makes Cash App? It's Square. Square, a very large uh, retail point of sale application that people you know, can plug the little thing. It was, it was revolutionary for small businesses to take credit cards, right? Instead of using the old machines where they had to like, you know, um, and have the, uh, the carbon copy paper and everything. And it lowered the uh, barrier to entry for businesses. And my wife uses it a ton, selling CDs at her gigs. It's, it's unbelievable, all right? And now if you download the, um, the app, I mean, here, look at this. Like, you know, if I were to go to my mom and, okay, let's see if we can get in there. And now we're to, um, eh, come on, let's get into, into frame. All right. And I, you see down there, there's a little, uh, down at the bottom. All right. So you can just send people money directly, you know, okay, over here, you can like click, oh, need to link the bank account first, which I haven't done, but they make it like you can send people crypto through your text messages. Okay. I know there's been a lot of projects out there that are trying to get crypto to move through social media channels like Airwire. There's, there's a ton of these things. And in my opinion, they're either going to get bought up for their tech, um, they're most likely not going to be that product in the end game. That's, that's the bottom line. There's, there's already too much. There's, there's much bigger players in the game already. And this is just phenomenal. I mean, watching these prices go up like this, 
once we once we reached, you know, so from like the Elliott wave perspective, um, I don't have the rest of the count up here. I just have kept this last little piece here. But um, uh, here, I'll throw up the um, the waveforms here, just so you can see. So there's three big rules in Elliott wave analysis, and that is uh, one of them is that wave four cannot cross into wave one territory. So if this was the last push down, and I thought for a while that this this far down low, that it was actually wave three, and that we were coming back up here to return back for a much lower wave four, like something like 2,500, maybe 1,800, like in the 2000, low 2,000 range or something. Not gonna happen now, not gonna happen. Um, you know, because once this price, way up here, crossed, once it crossed this this spot here, which, oh, let's see, we got locked, locked down. So let's see if we move that right there. You can obviously see price clearly broke through that. It was decisive in how it broke through that. No joking around, all right? Um, oops, click. So the... This whole thing is just phenomenal. And something else um, I want to do more research on is how money is being used in the dark, uh, the dark net. Is I, I, I was listening to this, and I want to confirm this myself, but that over all the usage in the dark web, 99% of it is used, is they're using Bitcoin. They're not even using privacy coins like Monero or any of these other things. Why? Because Bitcoin works. Like it's, it's, if somebody wants to stay fairly anonymous, they can still use Bitcoin. They can use brand new wallets and they're able to run through exchanges to hide things. Um, there's plenty of exchanges that don't require KYC that you can, you can uh, move things in and, and around. All right. Or just over the, over the counter stuff. All right. It is being used, and what is? Uh, let's see. Like, let's do. Let's do this. I, I didn't even look at this before, but let's say was the GDP of the black market. Oh, okay, there we go. Yeah, it's not giving us anything. Okay, fairly new, February 22nd, 2019, Newsweek, fairly, fairly good source of news. Um, citing the Rothschilds, State Financial that RBC claimed that as much as 20.7 trillion, okay, rubles, this is just gotta be Russia's stuff. Um, the size of the shadow, okay, no thank you. The economy increased slightly from 2017, it was estimated around 18.9 trillion, however, um, is that so 288 billion however both past two years are better than 2016 with the shadow economy I think they're still talking about Russia I'd like to get a, a solid overall um, so let's see let's say uh, How big is the world black market? There we go. Freakonomics, they always dig deep. So 22.67 of the world GDP. Okay, so um, what's the world GDP? On the global scale, uh, if the fourth largest economy in terms of the nominal GDP with a 3.6 billion GDP, Okay, let's just go to this one. Come on, just give us a, a total GDP. All right, so look at this. The United States GDP is 19.39 trillion. I would say the United States is considered to be a large uh, uh, pool of money. And 
Um, oh, this was percentage. I was thinking this was 22.67 trillion. But let's keep going. Uh, give me a percentage. Okay, it's manufacturing. Come on, where is... All right. Anyway, I want to dig deeper into this because I thought this is just pretty amazing that um, the uh, uh, that much use is, is in the black and gray markets. And if that is true, then nobody's going to come in there and beat that. If, if, if this is already regular commerce happening on this under um, uh, underground world, then it's it's Bitcoin is there or it's being used and I'm sure these big institutions have seen this as well and Always somewhere down the line the big institutions are supporting all commerce it doesn't they don't care if it's if it's illegal or or shunned upon or whatever They're there to make money. Okay, so with all this being said uh, Be safe out there um, be in charge of your own private keys uh, be careful about keeping money on exchanges, as you've seen this last week with Binance, even though funds are SAFU. Um, I was fortunate enough to uh, not have to deal with that. And be safe. All right, everybody. Peace. Thank you so much for watching another video. Please, if you could at this time, like and share, subscribe and hit those notifications so you can find out when the next video is coming up. Thank you so much again. Have a blessed day.